80s of that era. You're drifting. <laughs> yes, finally got it. We just it. drifted a Russian vehicle. I feel better about myself and Andre got I that think on we, film. You know what? I think it's cigar time at this point. <laughs> on this episode of TFL Truck, it's all about first impressions. And it's also about this my UAZ Buhanka four-wheel drive Russian van that I recently purchased. But it's really not about me, it's about two of my friends, Nathan and also a surprise guest who is <laughs> coming up right now. So let's see what they think of my Buhanka and then they're gonna drive it and get first impressions of this machine. Gentlemen, Andre. Motor man! I am in Colorado. Yes? Someone told me that you spent more money on shipping than an actual vehicle to get something from Sochi here in the Colorado Rockies. I, I did. didn't believe it. I did. Orale, comrade, how you doing? <laughs> I'm thrilled to be here with Motor Man and with Andre and with this. So I'm looking forward to getting my I just wheel. like the name. When I heard it was called the Buhanga. I was so excited, I actually renamed Andre. Did you know what the name may have come up with him? I, I, I heard it once, but say it again. Okay, so being he no longer lives in Russia, he lives in Colorado. That's right. That means it's gotta be something that he's living in exile. Mm -hmm. And then he's got this thing, which I would say this is not really a classic vehicle, it's a movement. People are excited about it. Everyone around the world knows about it, even though it was only sold in Russia. Right. Or behind the enemy lines. Yeah, yeah. Back in the day. In the day. So he is now the deposed leader of the Bohanka Freedom Party. Freedom Party. What? Yes. I think that's deposed perfect. leader. His house. I've seen pictures of his house. Yeah. He has two pickup trucks in front of his house. You have an electric car and a mini in front of your house. So he's more American than you are. I'm not denying that. I'm more that. American than you are driving a Toyota Forerunner TRD Pro. Which, by the way, did you know these things now have Apple CarPlay? Kind of. I mean, what it This is works. the last vehicle on the planet ever to get Apple CarPlay. My brother has one of these things. And it's funny, the, the dealer still to this day calls him every single month. Can, can we buy it back from you? Can we buy it back from you? But even with that, it's a relatively new one. It doesn't have Apple CarPlay. I was so excited they got in this thing. Not because of the color, but it actually works with my phone. But Motorman, this vehicle does not have Apple CarPlay. So This is I, the first time you've seen... First seen, time I've even okay. seen this thing in... I've seen them in pictures. Because, okay. you know, I used to live in Germany. I've seen them when they came over the border. But I don't know anything about this. I know about the Lada, uh -huh. which I know you want one of those. So give me the walk around. All right. So where do we begin? Let, let's start from the side, shall we? Okay. So short wheelbase. It's probably uh, under 100 inches. Yes. Okay, so, so short. So it's like a 911. Basically. Yeah. Basically. Or a Defender 90. Defender 90s no, is short. No, no. Or a 96 Blazer. Or a 96 Blazer. Yeah. So I'm going with 911. It was designed in 65. Actually, there was a model before it yeah. that preceded it. But this body style was designed in, in first on sale in 1965 in the Soviet Union. And then also some of the other countries, you know, in Asia and in Europe. And, uh, well... I just want you to open all the doors. It's four wheel drive, solid axles, leaf springs. Leaf springs. But you know what, that's, there are still trucks today in the capitalist system that have leaf springs. So that's not really a knock to a Only vehicle. a few. Okay, this is, it has a certain smell to it. I'll say that. What, it what, is, does. what does it smell like? Um, uh, it smells of the, 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 the city on the hill. That's what it smells like. Okay. Get a nice so wire. please, and well, Can enter. I go in here? Please enter. So you see this. So this um, uh, see, a headliner. It that's looks stacked. the same as the headliner from like a, a, a Volkswagen of the same era. Basically, yes. Yeah. Uh, it, this is factory. This floor is basically factory. Everything behind it is was, this factory. Uh, I think up to the window. This looks very new. Um, up that. to the window, maybe. And then everything else was uh, built up by the previous owner. Pardon the cobwebs on the ceiling. It adds charm to it. Um, the cobwebs, so the kids and I turned this into a Halloween machine. <laughs> a mystery machine, if I may. So you were um, like the Russian ghoul. Basically. Yeah. <laughs> we turned it into a Halloween machine and some of the decorations are still around. So, Motorman, you know, you are a connoisseur of unique and high-performance machines, right? Yes, sir. But I would wager that this van right here is probably one of the most rare vehicles in the United States right now. 
I would agree with you on that, but I think I we should we should frame that. How many were produced, and for how long? Dude, started in 1965. And when did they to stop manufacturing? They still, still make this body style. Yes, yes. You can get a new buhanka. Yes, you can walk into a dealership in uh, any of the big major cities yeah. in in Russia, and, and you can buy one. What does this vehicle cost today? About twelve to thirteen thousand dollars. New, brand new. Oh my god! I know. Seriously, we're in the wrong country. Okay, that okay, so, that vehicle over there, I think, is like fifty-five grand. Yeah, that's, that's before if the you could get it at retail. Yeah, that's exactly it. But and there's no chips in this one, so there should be no shortage. So one chip. There, no you kidding. You know what? I got this an idea. Let's forget this video thing. Yeah. Let's start importing Buancas <laughs> and just sell make, them make, to make everybody. It, make it a business. Make it a business. Yeah. Let's do this. Yeah. My viewers want to know all about the suspension and the brakes. Yes. So please. These are not stock tires. Mm -hmm. These were after the fact, 31 inch tall tires. So the previous owner put them on. But this is a fully floating axle. So this is kind of heavy duty machine. It can handle some payload. Uh, I'll show you underneath the vehicle soon, but it's when got- When you say payload, give me an idea of payload. I, I want to say almost like 1500 pounds, something like a full size pickup truck right so that's, now. That's, yeah, what your F-150 does Yeah, basically unbraked. this will do that too. Yeah. So, so this, this was me. Yes. I, I did uh, rust repair and a little bit of paint on the okay. bottom. So my next project would be to take care of uh, to care, uh, the rust up here. Yeah. And I'm going to make this white. You know, like an FJ Cruiser? Oh yeah, that's a cool idea. Yeah, so like this will be white from up here. Did they ever do that from the factory? I don't think so. Yeah, they're, no, they're, they're, no. they're not into too colors. Too fancy. That's too much. Um, so here, this is the cargo area. Let me show you. Um, I'm looking at this here just before we go over there. The way this is built, yes. were there different lengths on offer? Like, could they have made a longer version of this? Uh, so yeah. I think there was one on six wheel drive. Yeah. And there was also track based tank, tank tracks based yeah. vehicles. But they also had ambulance versions of this and Mil they had uh, police versions right, of this. Right, exactly. Uh, fire department versions yeah. of this. <laughs> um, okay, so here's the business end of this machine, the okay. cargo area. And this was on this, so this, was on the van when I bought it. Yeah. This I put on. Clearly, because I wouldn't think the guy in Sochi knows what Keystone is. Keystone, Colorado, um, I, I asked this to be put on because it was a nasty English word oh. written uh, uh, on a sticker here. You have to tell me off camera. Look at these latches, motorman. That is like circa 1641. <laughs> <laughs> Charlemagne, you I mean, something? Look at how this. this is put together. It's like brass fitments and it's not exactly the the, the 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 tolerance is not very good here. Like this, I could drive that that forerunner through this. It's like it's like the Holland Tunnel in New Jersey. Motorman, may I present? This is. Oh, that is super cool. Well, so when you have you know. So these prison, guys prisoners. were doing it before Ford and GM. Yes, was. let's see that again. Watch this. Okay, I love. Now this. you can enter. Now I can enter. This is super cool. I think it's amazing that this kind of packaging and detailing was in a vehicle that frankly is rudimentary. Yes. Because even a, a Chevy of the same era was a bit more, the engineering was farther ahead than this. Well, the, probably the powertrains were ahead on, oh, than this powertrain. Yeah. But none of them, none of them had steps. That's awesome. Dual tanks, saddle tanks, how, uh, unleaded fuel. How much? Like, so 13 gallons on this side, seven gallons on the passenger side, about it's 20 like gallons. So um, it, it's like um, it's like a yak plane. This is a uh, yak. No, yak holds uh, 25 on each side. Okay, I'm sorry yeah. about that. So then, so this just say, so those of you who don't know what a yak is, that's that plane in my hangar when you see my episode. So. I added this belt because the other one was broken. Yeah. So now let me show you this. Can you step us of back? Course. Just one step. One step. One step. So uh, now these seats are... It's like a fixed racing seat. Well, kind of. So it, well, it sort of reclines. It's got That's got to be a Recaro, yeah, that look is. Look at that. Look at that. See that? It's like a Lear or a Recaro seat. The black thing on that wall is the only computer. That's the ignition computer. And that was from the factory, a computer, or it was added later? So originally it wasn't fuel injected, it was carbureted, but mm -hmm. somebody has updated it. I, I think this is the newer engine, which is a 2.7 liter uh, four, four cylinder gasoline, not diesel, gasoline. Were they on offer as diesel? Oh no, 
Something. Oh. Uh oh. Okay, so uh, that's not the supposed. Build, the build quality of the Russian uh, oh, interior it's just people a not great. Mask and yeah. We got to speak to the color and trim people, people at UAZ. Yeah. Uh, the radiator is here, so it's not air cooled. It's actually uh, water cooled. Mm -hmm. um, From day one, they were. They were water yeah, I, be okay. I believe so. But this machine is also meant to work in extremely cold temperatures. So uh, you cannot really see it from up here, but on the bottom, there are different little uh, valves that actually shut off the yeah. uh, oil circulation from the radiators to make sure that the oil stays in the engine um, so 40 below type temperatures this machine should still operate at very cold temperatures and did UAZ make their own engines or was it another company made them for them I believe it's theirs it's either made specifically for them exclusively or it was them and this engine, was it used only in the Buhanka or was it used in other UAZ? I'm sure they used it in other yeah. vehicles. Yeah, in many others because there was also a Jeep version of this, Jeep looking version yeah. of this. <laughs> and did they make other engines that were bigger? Like, was there a V6 on offer? V6. Decadent. I, I got it. Decadent. My Westerner. decadent copy, uh, ca capitalist, like my Toyota over there. So the fuel gauge works and then the battery voltage works. Uh, this also my speedometer odometer work and it only has hundred and sixteen thousand kilometers So it's basically a brand new and you think that's true miles? No, I don't think yeah, so. I say so But you see this motor man? Yeah, Nathan, do you see this? So this little uh, knob That's actually if it had a little turning knob, which it doesn't but you can actually uh, control the level of the headlights. Oh, that's some high-tech stuff. So that's, you, you well, could... that's a big deal within European cars at that yes. day. And also, I have this. I'm amazed they have that. You have OnStar? <laughs> <laughs> wow, this thing took a leap forward. No, I'm sorry, this is from my Hummer H2. Yeah. So uh, this is the only thing that's left of my Hummer because I sold it. Yeah. But I thought, you know, if I get lost, yeah. I, have, I have OnStar. I'm sure it'll plug right in. Yeah. Okay, are you ready to go for a drive? I'm super excited to go for a drive. I so came to now you know, just for this. Now you know most of the, most of the guys. So um, this is a 2.7 fuel injected motor, four speed manual, about 90 horsepower, 90, nine zero, when it was new. Rear wheel drive, four low is available, but we're not doing rock crawling today. Let's keep it in just a <laughs> too high. Yeah. I was uh, planning on taking this thing up to fail. Do a couple of runs. Are you serious? Yeah, absolutely. Climbing up to high elevation? Yeah, I want to go up the mountain in this thing because I don't want to have to pay for the chair. Oh, yeah, I'm not going up and down. You're not, you know. This, uh, it, again, all joking aside, this is probably the luckiest UAZ Blanca on the planet that it got plucked from Sochi and is now living in the stunning wonderland of the Rocky Mountains. Yeah, and I think it's also maybe the only running Buhanka van in the US. Correctly. Well, according to Haggerty it is, because they didn't have it in their database. Yeah, I called Haggerty, um, it wasn't in their database, the, then they added it, now it's insured, and please. I'm very excited about this. Okay, let me see if I can get up here. Okay, get in here. The clutch is like, the clutch is in California and the gas is in Colorado. Oh, the power. But look, it's like a Porsche, so the key... Oh, it's a Le Mans start! Yeah, That's exactly. great! And notice the key, it's like a small version of an old Mercedes key. Okay, break in. That's a heavy clutch. Let's see what we can do here. Let's see if I can get the key in there. It, it goes either way. It's very, it's, it, it takes some coaxing, huh? There you go. Okay, here we go. Oh, yeah! <laughs> Feel the power! Did you see that? It was half a turn. It has a very Volkswagen sound. It does. I don't know why. It shouldn't because it's not air cold it's not air and cold. it's not flat. Yeah. Why is that? Why? Maybe because it's underneath you? It's right That's next to you. That's very strange. Uh, are you guys going to jump in? Absolutely. Okay. I'm looking forward to this. Good luck. Okay, are you ready? Yeah, what do I have? It's a simple H pattern, so it's only four forward gears. Yes. This is the is the brake. It's on already released. It's already yeah. so it hasn't been moving at all. No, no. Uh, it 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 knows when it's to be put. Here we go, gentlemen. Here we go. <laughs> Hi, Toyota. By the way, there is no power steering. Ah, you don't need it though. I don't feel like I need it at all, even at low speeds. This is a totally different experience here. Is that we gotta? I think we gotta tell people to get out of our way. There's no horn. Oh, there's a horn down here. Oh, so this is great UX design. Go, go, I have to go think. Left. Go left. Okay, here we go. <laughs> no, I Can we drift? drift. 
first impressions, yeah. the steering actually, it's, the feedback is terrible. <laughs> it, it's not direct, but the weight of the steering is actually very good. Well, there's no power steering, yes. Okay, now we're gonna, we're gonna do some passing maneuvers. Ready, here we go. Well, yeah. Second, third, so I can tell you right now with what? that shift, yes. this is a more leisurely vehicle. You need to be not in a rush. No, 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 never in a rush. Never in a rush. And it, it, it top speed is about 60 maximum. <laughs> so you okay, don't want to so go fast. You and I are going approximately 40 miles an hour. 40 kilometers an hour. 40 kilometers, I'm sorry, so 40 kilometers an hour. Yes. So we're doing what are we doing? Like 26. About, about 28, something like that. Yeah. And we're in a situation where we're driving on the county fairgrounds yes. here. So this is where horses go, so not exactly good pavement. And I gotta tell you, the ride quality's not bad, it's going not, almost 30 miles No, an hour. it's not bad at all. I think the tires are part of that. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna ford oh, a river. Wait, 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 wait. I need to get out. I need to get this on camera. Okay. Are you ready for this? Yeah. We're gonna attempt a simulated river fjording or fording, whatever you call it. Here we go. Ready? Yep. Oh, oh, oh! I think uh, I hurt myself. No, I don't think I need to reproduce anymore. Thank you. I literally hit my elbow on the door, and that was painful. <laughs> Take. It. Oh my God. This thing is super fun to drive. Uh, yeah, especially for the back. I can part. totally see why you got this thing. <laughs> I'm happy that you're happy. It's like, it's almost as fun as driving a 911, but in a very different way. I uh, don't see that, but okay. Shall we do the turning radius test? God help me, yes. Santa Maria, Andre de Dios. Here we go. This is full lock, full lock. Uh, it's not as good as I thought it would be. Oh, yeah, that hurts. That hurts. Gracias, Dios. This thing is awesome. A 911, it ain't, but it's that kind of fun, all wrapped in an off-road Russian package. Well, thank you. Nathan, I, I really want you to drive. I Can think you, you drive? should drive it. I would be thrilled to. Okay. Now he's going to torture me. Oh, wait a minute. This thing has a USB outlet. You got a USB? You decadent I didn't Westerner. Know USB made it to Soviet era Russia. This is a good look on you. Thank you. Well, yeah. It's not a Nissan Leaf, is it? This thing is super cool. Like, don't tell Andre this, but I I'm super proud of him. It's much better driving than I thought it would be. It is way better driving than I thought. It's more, it's like a more cohesive drive experience. I thought this thing would be a mess all over the road. And now granted, we're not really taking it high speeds on the road. It's not really designed for that. But the fact that we're on this basically horse stable area where all of this dirt has been beaten up by the horses and the ride quality is not horrific, it's pretty good. What a lot of viewers would say is, yeah, but what happens when something really does break? Well, that's what, you have to be a guy that can wrench. Well, yeah, and he knows people who can wrench on top of that. And that's what Russian eBay is for. You can well, buy kidneys on there, and you can buy parts <laughs> for your bahanka. So that's the beauty of owning a classic vehicle of this vintage, whether it's Russian or Western world. A lot of the work can be done yourself, and the parts put aside Cadillacs and Mercedes of that era. You're drifting. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, finally got it. We a just drifted a Russian vehicle. I feel better about myself and Andre got I that think on we, film. You know what? I think it's cigar time at this point. <laughs> we have officially drifted a Russian vehicle. What? A Soviet era vehicle. Just a little sideways. Is it like Ken Block or something? Oh yeah, that's exactly what He's, I Do you know the serial number is right under your ass on the right side of the vehicle? Really? Uh, so it's part of my skin. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah, I did, that, well, I did that for you. Yeah, the thing is, is that the um, passenger seat is nowhere near as forgiving as the driver's seat is, which explains why Andre put a shoulder belt on that side to keep his wife from reaching over and strangling him as he's bouncing over things. So at the end of the day, this is really not an investment in a classic car vehicle. This is an investment in marriage counseling. <laughs> it could wow. be, but but you and I, I mean, I think we really do agree. This is a really fun vehicle. It's unique. It's not stupid expensive. Yeah. If you need to get something that's kind of a classic, unique, different vehicle. Yeah. And honestly, I mean, how much is it going to cost other than a kidney to get a piece of this vehicle from Russia sent to you, right? 
Not much. I'm gonna go a step further. I build on it. I totally agree with what he says. I see down the road in the classic car world, we've already seen like toy old classic FJs and Volkswagen campers and Volkswagen buses. And the classic car world, those are 150 grand and above at this point. I could start seeing maybe not this one, the Buhanka just yet, but what is a lot of Neva? Sure. I could totally, because there's enough of those things in the US now, and people know enough about those vehicles where there's gonna get a little bit of collector car value. Maybe not at like Gooding and RM, but definitely on Bring a Trailer. And I see this one, you know, like Rising Tide raises all ships. The Volkswagens, they brought the Broncos and the four and the yeah, FJs yeah. up. I think the a lot of Neva will bring these up in the classic car world. I would agree with you, and I think Andre is actually working ahead of us. Foresight. He's already seen this thing You're saying making he's a money. The Merlin of the Russian collector car world. He is indeed in the Buhanka collector world. And that is why he is the deposed leader, leader of, of the, the Buhanka, Buhanka Freedom, Freedom Party. Party. Yeah. And you heard it here first. <laughs> there you have it.